Hello and welcome back to another guide for Lamplighters League. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing another class guide. We're looking at Purnima, the sneaky Deadeye Sniper. As always, I'm going through the skills, highlight her core mechanics, then look at equipment and then at the undrawn hand plus some gameplay. So let's get right into it. Purnima out of the gate uh, comes with one of the highest damage per shot, maybe not even rivaled by anyone really, but she comes with a couple of problems that her kit partially solves. So her uh, passive ability Dead Eye um, allows her with attacks that are made from high ground to gain an additional 25% crit chance on top of the 30% crit chance that you would already get from high ground. So that's a whooping plus 55% crit chance. Her uh, signature ability is Trickshot, where at the beginning you choose two locations. Later uh, you can even choose three locations uh, to uh, bounce the bullet off and then basically pathway through enemies. That is quite good because you are dealing a lot of damage AOE. And since from Trickshot 2 onwards you do have two signature charges to start with, uh, an endgame Purnima has three, uh, two signature abilities with three locations each. So that in itself is already a good ability that she has. Her core mechanic that I would highlight is her zero in ability, which will cost one action point um, on the upgraded version it will mark areas uh, mark enemies in an area up to 18 tiles away which can be quite uh, far and 5 aoe is a moderately sized uh, aoe so all of the enemies will be marked and she will become invisible on uh, top of that which is a great way of starting or ending a round at uh, the with the core abilities of course it's not great if you're uh, playing her in an optimized fashion because uh, then you are doing something other than damage dealing and that's really what her main role is so what else is a great ability kill shot is a great ability and this is where marking becomes so important uh, it's a ranged ability has a higher crit chance 30 percent to be precise if you're doing it from high ground that alone will bring it to 100 percent onto mark target Targets. On a uh, miss, the target uh, will be graced for 50% of the damage, which is okay, but she typically hits. And on a hit, the marked target uh, will, uh, uh, once you're killing it, uh, give you 1 AP. And for hitting the marked target, it will give you 1 AP as well. So the base ability just uh, gives you 1 AP for hitting a marked target. The upgraded kill shot ability adds on top of that cumulatively another AP if you're killing the target. So kill shot really allows you to not only kill a target but gain two um, action points back. And that is important because all of uh, Purnima's shots with the exception of snapshot which isn't really dealing a lot of damage um, are costing two AP. And that's where the crooks of the whole core um, build comes in. Uh, typically Purnima doesn't have the option to spend an AP to mark targets by herself so she relies very much on ways of others to help her with that. Zero in is a good ability to mark targets but you typically don't have the AP to spare unless someone is feeding you AP or you're getting AP from other sources and that will be something that's going to be very very important as uh, we're going to look into her build. Other noticeable um, abilities is upon reloading, she can become inspired. I just want to highlight uh, that. And when Punima is invisible, her speed is increased by three. That's also good for repositioning. Generally, the other tree is an Overwatch uh, lockdown tree, which isn't that great. Uh, I don't want to uh, take too much time in going into that. It's okay, but nothing to ride home in. And finally, Stalker attacks against marked enemies will reduce the cooldown of kill shot by one, which you can imagine once you do have marked uh, tar uh, targets, the um, four rounds cooldown, I think it was, or three rounds cooldown will be reduced by one with the Stalker ability. So really, uh, Purnima herself, as the kit, um, as the kit uh, demonstrates it, would need to take a normal um, shot, then mark targets, and then in the next round come back to it and use kill shot um, to regain two AP, then maybe use a normal shot to regain another AP against a, um, a, a target, 
um, and then kind of wait until the cooldown is ready again. You can already see that that is not optimal. You want more cooldown reduction from Purnima, way more cooldown reduction in a perfect world. Your kill shot uh, will continue to kill marked targets, but that is where Purnima requires help from others in terms of marking and then continuing to kind of clean up. It's almost like serial from a sniper in XCOM with a few um, side conditions uh, that you basically need to go through cooldowns a lot. So let's see how we can achieve that or something akin to that. Starting with obvious uh, things that are helpful with Purnima for, uh, uh, for, for starters, anyone who can create markings, most, no most noticeably Eddie, who can do it very uh, simple, or Latif, who can also do it um, by being attacked, uh, will help her out a lot because enemies that are marked clearly are easier for her to kill because the whole kill chain uh, begins. That being said, there are a couple of items that I would highly recommend using on her. Um, let's start with the weapon mods. Uh, of course, she can use any weapon mod she wants, but I personally like the assassination talisman because what she wants is to crit 100% of the time. Uh, the assassination talisman gives her just a, uh, the extra uh, crit chance that she needs in order to get those juicy, juicy, juicy big crits and gives her 60% crit damage. With that, an endgame Purnima, if uh, critted up to 400 uh, points of damage, depending on the circumstances, normal shots will typically crit in the 200s, but that is a lot of damage and makes it way easier for you to get those kills on marked targets. In terms of uh, armor she isn't that dependent on it i'm using vitality gear 3 just for the stress and the extra hit points but you can use whatever you want now the important part is more so on the accessory and there are a couple of ways of playing that so number one is you can um, use uh, ballistic calculation reload abilities gain 100 percent crit chance I use that in order to uh, further ensure that the first ability is going to be a crit. There are other ways of playing it. You could use the bandolier. Um, of course, not if you're using her together with Eddie because it's way better on him, but that would give her the chance to regain some of her, um, of her uh, ammunition and prevent her from needing to reload as often. So those are things that are easily working with her. You could, of course, use the vitality engine as well uh, where buffs and um, debuff consumables regain an uh, AP allowing her to be more mid-range skirmisher and then uh, using uh, all of uh, the um, consumables in order uh, to give her a bit more um, yeah crowd control abilities unfortunately none of the accessories will uh, solve her quote-unquote biggest problem which is the cooldown reduction so all of that here uh, makes sure that she deals critical uh, damage so that her sniping shots are actually dealing as much damage as possible. So now how do you solve the cooldown uh, issue which you need in order to get the kill shot cooldown as often as possible and basically snipe in a row? There are a couple of ways of doing that. The most common ways of going about uh, the problem with her cooldown reduction is to use and rely on the undrawn hand. Well, clearly one of the things that you could do is go into the Sage. Um, if you are lucky enough to find that card and put it on her, that's good. Gives her crit uh, on opponent scoring a critical hit. Cooldowns are reduced by one, which is great because then she can continue, um, very soon continue to uh, go back with kill shot and essentially gain AP back. But with Purnima, um, you will be having a quote-unquote losing battle as you cannot just kill shot, kill shot, kill shot. There is no way of just doing that without being lucky. Another way of uh, going about it is essentially using uh, the uh, Great Wind ability, uh, inspire her and have a chance to gain uh, ability points that way. I did a different um, build for her in this regard and went into the Serpent, which is a self buff that uh, gives you one AP period and then has a um, cooldown. On the highest level, the cooldown is two rounds, but you can reduce the cooldown of that card with other cooldown uh, reducing cards. So in a perfect world, you would potentially have the Serpent uh, plus Into the Wind plus uh, the Sage, 
all in one to just continue reducing her cooldowns uh, but there are other ways of uh, going about it you can simply accept that uh, you will only land one kill shot per round you mark the targets kill shot regain two ap from that and then um, use uh, use a normal shot regain an AP from that and use the serpent on top of that so that you can do another normal uh, shot. That's a pretty powerful um, combination in itself. You can, like I did, put a couple of riders on top of uh, her shot. In this case, I am using the Forsaken because I want to use her uh, her signature ability more. With that, I can hit up to five six targets if they are positioned correctly and having one of them dazed and one of them knocked down as a consequence of doing that is a very very strong other um, uh, ability that she could do essentially not only pigeonholing her into uh, being a damage dealer the last one that i have on her is the gambler i potentially would um, re um, assess that if i was to um, to, uh, to put that uh, card on her. When she dodges an, um, an enemy, she becomes inspired, so it's a way of getting inspired herself easily and recover 30 health. It's an easy way to uh, prevent her in the back line to be eaten up. You can use another uh, a card on her. The gambler just worked incredibly uh, well, and uh, in my playthrough, I already had the Sage on other characters, uh, but that doesn't mean you can't put it um, onto her. Sage uh, plus Serpent plus um, into uh, the Great uh, the great Wind are potentially easy ways of reducing uh, the uh, cooldown problem and ability point problem that she has. Even without all of that, with just uh, the Serpent, she is dealing 400 plus damage on the first shot and then another 200, uh, 200 odd on the second one. That's a lot of damage. So uh, Purnima is a great agent in this regard. And with her dazing capabilities, she adds even more to the table. So let's see how that actually plays out in a gameplay situation. Good, we're looking into Purnima and her capabilities. We have just started uh, the fight, got inspired, and as such, uh, we received an extra AP. So we're starting the round with three AP. Quite a few crowd-controlled enemies on the right-hand side, but also quite a few enemies that are going to approach us from uh, the left-hand side. Now, that's a problem in itself, but Purnima is a great uh, problem solver. We could use our marked uh, marking ability and kill shot as a combination in order to go through here but i decide that um, for now since uh, fadir hasn't yet marked uh, the enemies i will actually be a little bit more um, action efficient and uh, try to use her ultimate and one way of uh, doing exactly that is to find kind of these sweet spots um, amongst all of uh, the fields where you can hit multiple enemies at the same time uh, whilst uh, you can only hit them once by uh, by the way but you can hit multiple enemies at the same time whilst uh, dealing as much damage as possible what I would want to do is maybe daze one or two of them and make it hard for them to uh, effectively start uh, to summon and come closer to us. I think we're prioritizing this type of shot and you can see we're hitting five people. So that's right uh, now, off the bat. Now, don't be shy. Uh, 200, 300, that was a solid 250 um, on top of it, and another hit. So we're looking at around 700 points of damage, yeah. followed up by a nice little really self buff with Opportunist that allows us to do a no normal sniper shot. And instead of going for the kill shot, which would be one option here, I decide to take the normal shot in order to leave kill shot for next round since we do have marked targets for the first time. There is the daze that I was looking for, which will keep the mummy not only at bay, but you can already see the mummy on top of one kill, three devastating uh, injuries. Um, we also got uh, the mummy down to less than 50% on a 400 hit point enemy. So that is just one round of her. Let's see how the next round plays out.
Let's look into another situation with Purnima. We find ourselves in a situation where we got ambushed by a troop. Um, all of them could nicely be at least knocked down. And we unfortunately have yet again one of those situations where Purnima could maybe um, require a bit of marking but unfortunately the targets that were marked are already perished so let's use her self Contact ability spotted. of uh, marking uh, which will not only grant her the invisibility uh, state but also marks all of the enemies nicely followed up with a kill shot that um, uh, if uh, used correctly might even kill the enemy unfortunately uh, it did not crit so all we did is daze that enemy keep in mind though a knockdown dazed enemy is just uh, taken out of uh, the equation because they cannot get up next turn we're um, using our uh, cart to um, update uh, our AP and we got a second um, run where we're just using a absolutely wonderful uh, cleanup here to kill two of the enemies and injure the rest heavily. So that shot alone dealt around 700 points of damage and uh, killed two of uh, them, heavily injured uh, the remaining ones. Let's see how Purnima uh, can deal with uh, the uh, follow-up situation here. Since we nicely killed two of them, our kill shot is right back up. And what we would want to do is continue our rampage. So uh, in this case, we are looking for targets that we can uh, more or less single-handedly kill. Uh, and a great option to do that is to effectively set them up for that. Eddie is a good option, but in this case, I am going to use Fidir as her helper. Fidir uses his shotgun. You can see plenty of damage coming in. And Purnima now, with her kill shot, is capable of just taking out uh, one of them, regaining two AP in the process. Then following up with another shot, almost killing that scumbag uh, of a mummy. And if we wouldn't have run out of ammunition, we could have snapshot uh, killed him. Reloading. Well, not a problem because we're just reloading, getting an AP back. And the next uh, shot is an auto crit. As you can appreciate, uh, that will be enough in order to kill the mummy. So. Purnima can clean up if we're just looking at that particular situation. We started with five enemies and with, um, of course, some help, but limited help. Uh, Purnima killed four of them by herself. The only thing that is keeping this mummy alive is their reincarnation ability. Everybody else has simply been eradicated and she continues to get going. Imagine if someone else would have set her up with a nice little marking, then the first round would have potentially yielded even another kill. If that isn't convincing, I don't know what is. Um, I hope you liked uh, Purnimer's build. Let me know what you think about her as a sniper and let me know what you think about the build uh, in the comment section down below. If you enjoy build guides, uh, feel free to check out one of the other build guides that I do have for Lamplighters League. Elsewise, have a great day and see you soon. Bye bye.